Terror. Filling in for Smokey, because after 75 years of... Only you can prevent wildfires. Turns out there's much more to say. Nearly 90% of wildfires are caused by us humans being careless. Dumping our used barbecue coals willy-nilly. Guess the song was wrong. We did start the fire. That's why I respect Mother Nature and her trees, whether coniferous or new car scented. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Bass players, best thing you can do for your overall sound. You've got to see this. New Bass Tone Incorporated makes Nightwalker Bass Guitar Tube Preamps. This preamp will give your sound such a boost, it's just incredible. Try it today. Try it today now. A great sounding bass guitar will make for a great sounding band. Make your band sound at its best. Best thing you can do for your bass guitar sound. NewBassTone.com NewBassTone.com This is Nikki Hall, founder of Simply Radiant LLC, a woman with great passion and skill to make you look and feel better. Meet me where you are. Let's take it to another level, a new you. See you soon. Call 919-971-6243. Make your place today. The old renaissance is the new renaissance. Standing on tradition while embracing the spirit of distinction. This is the Harlem Brewing Company. Uniquely crafted beer brewed to deliver a taste, a sound, and a feeling that can only be described in one way. Harlem style. So come and take a trip on the A-Train with our Harlem Sugar Hill Golden Ale and our Harlem Renaissance Whiskey, the neighborhood original. Are you enjoying the smoothest conversation in podcasting? Straight talk with Dean and Mark. Hi, this is DJ Smooth Jazz, syndicated radio host and co-owner of Portfolio Group, LLC, your smooth jazz lifestyle and entertainment group with offices in Durham, North Carolina. Portfolio Group, LLC, specializes in promoting the lifestyle of smooth jazz listeners with the promotion of smooth jazz events, and the distribution of African-American-owned wines. For more information, PortfolioGroupLLC.com, or you can swing by my secondary site, DJSmoothJazz.com. Now back to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. All right, bro, what you find out? Well, I just got in touch with uh, Terry. He should be calling us in the next two to three minutes, so we'll just continue Chit chatting and everything, but yes, I did get Terry. And oh, yeah. you know, sometimes you just type too fast, and when you type too fast, you miss a number. So he had actually emailed me earlier to tell me that I was <laughs> off by a digit. So those things happen. We're all human and we all make mistakes. So when he told me what is right. going on, I was like, oh, that's the really played by you had called yet. <laughs> right. That's all right. went on and everything. So that's just the way things go sometimes. But we're going to keep this thing rolling right along. So you were talking to the uh, Nice and them have some new albums out, so that is a uh, not nice. But you said it was um, well, who was that? Yeah, that, was, um, that they were just performing. It, the group is Little Brother, and when they right. first came out, remember Ninth Wonder was a part of that. But yes. with the record label and everything that's going on now, he's not a part of that group. But they are still rocking. You know, Fonte and Big Pooh are still doing their thing and it's been a while since they had um some music out so they put this album out called may the lord watch and it just came out this week so you know and then like the next day jam the records rhapsody e that's the name of the album e and um that came out so it's been a good week for some good music you know what i mean and and I just wanted to play that one because it was a nice little jam. And, again, it'll be another nice little jam at the end when we take it out of here, you know. So that's it, man. Oh, you know what? I was looking online today. Happy birthday to Ty Jones. I and did Ty see that. Was the host. Ty was the host, the original host of The Voice of the People that brought all of us together, you know. And just want to shout her out and say happy birthday to her, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, definitely. She definitely brought us together and uh, 
definitely we know that that is a part of our history and everything. So definitely it is uh, doing some uh, positive things. I'm saying she's fighting some battles of her own and everything. We know that uh, one of my friends lost the battle with what she's now going through. So definitely any right. of these folks that are going through struggling with breast cancer or any sort of cancer, we definitely know that these can be some very difficult things to struggle with and deal with. So definitely our prayers are going out there as she continues that battle. Indeed. Indeed, man, because whew, um, God gives his hardest test to his strongest soldiers. So, you know, I didn't understand that statement until something happened to me. You know, and, and from that point, it was like, I still don't get it, but when I was able to overcome that, now I kind of understand it, you know. But for those that, who that are... Makes- yeah, they make sense, and and then you see who, you know, who's in your corner when everybody's in your corner when things are good, but when things get a little rough, you find out who's supposed to be in your corner. Yeah, and I think that's across the board. I would even argue that that's even across the board with some of our major issues. I know that when I've talked to my friend uh, Zach, who's been going through some stuff with. Uh, housing and things of that nature. Yeah, people give you a lot of talk, even what we talked about earlier with what that uh, banquet was about. People give a lot of talk about what they can be doing or what they should be doing, but when the um, it hits the road and you've got to actually make some decisions that's going to impact folks, folks give more lip service than they do actual action. And I know that in a lot of times, and we know that politicians are going to be politicians and folks of that nature, but sometimes you actually got to do the hard work of making the changes and just can't give lip service. Because after a while, folks can get tired of the lip service and they're going to want to see action and see reality. Yeah, because lip service doesn't do anything, but you get tired of listening. You know, after a while, it's like, you really are wasting my time. So what a value do you have for me? Well, let me tell you about this. No, I don't want to talk about that. We talked about that three months ago. And it's still the same. You know, well, let me tell you about this. No, don't want to listen to that either. Because all you're doing is talking in circles. And after a while, people figure it out. Like, no, no, and no. (laughs) Exactly. They said they're going like, why are they even bringing this up? I need to see the actual actions and what they are actually going to do. You can say that you're going to build affordable housing, but... What is your definition of affordable housing, and what are you doing to make that housing affordable? I know I was talking to a uh, person because I posted on this thing called Open Mic, which is a new platform that lets folks give their opinions, but in a shortened version. And one of the things that was talking about was rent experiences. And one person was telling me that in their town, and I believe they're out of the West Coast somewhere, the average rent that they were dealing with was somewhere in the neighborhood of $3,500. So if it's like, let's say that they're in Silicon Valley, and they're paying 35000 if they come here and they can get it for 1500 which we think is expensive, or 1700 to them, that's a cakewalk because that's half of what they were paying in San Francisco. Man, rent, 3500 Oh, golly. They said 3500 you know that's, 3. that's No, man, hold on. For what, a two-bedroom? I Damn. want to say that they said that one of these rents that they were quoting me was for like a very like almost an efficiency. No, see, uh, uh-uh. golly, man, I would have to move because there's no way that for thirty five hundred dollars a month, I I gotta have like it's gotta be something decent, like super decent, with like four bedrooms. At least two and a half baths, a den, a kitchen, you know, like a house. Right. <laughs> You're spending all that money, and then unless they get paid on along those lines where 3500 is comparable, you know, then okay, that makes sense. But if they don't, then man, how do they live? How are they living? I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that they're making the kind of like money that you would make it like working for Google or some of these major corporations where they might be making something in the neighborhood of 100000 or something plus. But even in that case, 3500 times 12 
is oh, I probably would the fraction part, but three times twelve would be thirty six thousand. And so let's do a half of that, which is another uh, six thousand. So about forty two thousand dollars of your money is going to be in rent. Right. Even if you're making a hundred, exactly. even if you're making even if you're making a hundred k, forty two thousand is in rent, which is about forty percent of your income. Yeah, if you're doing it on your own, that's rough. Because remember, you got to take out the taxes. So if you take the tax out of a hundred thousand, you can pay probably at least twenty eight to thirty thousand in taxes. Sure. And we haven't even got so now, to the um, <laughs> we haven't even got to the utilities because I imagine if thirty five k is if the, um, imagine if they're paying like three point five k for rent that they're probably paying something high for electricity, water, and the other car insurance, the other things that you've got to pay just to survive for those that have right. cars and everything. So I'm imagining that if we add the rest of the expenses, we're probably looking at Somewhere in the neighborhood of sixty to seventy. You gotta be making at least one hundred and fifty thousand to two hundred thousand in order to afford it. Because if you add a hundred thousand, you really go and, and if it's one person, they're actually gonna be living paycheck to paycheck. Dang, that's the point. Crazy. Dang. And we but we send all of this money to these other countries, and we send aid to. You know, arguing with China and want to impose tariffs and all this other stuff. But people are really like struggling to get what they need and basic necessities that they should have without a problem. And not only that, but I mean, just think about what we're doing in terms of like those that are homeless, that are actually homeless, that actually manage to for whatever reason, and not be able to pay their rent or pay their bills and everything. So then they're out on the streets, and in some cases, I don't know how it is in New Jersey, but in some cases here, you've got to be out of the shelter by a certain hour. So that's why sometimes oh, yeah. when the, the library was doing renovations, but for a minute there, when the library wasn't doing the renovations, the library was a popular hangout spot because they had to be out by a certain hour, and they had to be in by a certain hour. So during that in-between time, you know, what some people would consider the working hours, but it's actually – Extended past the working hours because you got to be out way during the like during the drive time that people are going to the job as well as during the dinner time I think is when they got to come back so really you're talking about your work schedule doing doing what would be your work hours as well as maybe three hours that are not your work hours. Yeah, well up here I know they have to be out by six in the morning, and right, the last good. person they will accept is like eleven at night, but usually. If you wait that long, you'll get there and there's no bed for you. So, you know, they usually get in, they get out by 6, and then everybody's back in by like 9 p.m. So 15 hours time frame, but at the same time, if you wait, you know, when I used to work at the treatment center, people used to come by like, can I just stand in the lobby and get some heat? And I'm like, I'm sorry, but, you know, unless you stay here, and you're a resident here, you won't be able to just stay in the lobby because it was the door was electronically controlled. So, wow. you know, couldn't let them stay in the lobby because there was no seats right there. It's just a small little lobby. And after all of our residents had to be in by 11. So 11.01, you come wherever you came from, you just mark late and – then you have to go back. You couldn't come back until the morning. So it's like I can't even let people who are residents here come in after 11. So I really can't let you just lay down in my lobby. Yeah, I can't explain this. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. And, the, and that's that's crazy. The, the, the shelter was like two blocks away. But they were like, well, I got there. There was a bed there, but I didn't want to sleep in that bed. And I was like, in my mind, I'm thinking, damn, that's got to be kind of hard. People do have preferences. Some people say, oh, well, yeah. you're, hom- you're homeless and you need a bed, and there was one. Why didn't you get it? But he's still human, you know. And 
So we, we look at 